And welcome everybody to the uh, August trading meeting. Uh, James Hallowell, Lex Van Dam, uh, we're back again for a monthly uh, for the monthly meeting. Uh, obviously, we've just had uh, Brexit uh, behind us, uh, James. Uh, that's uh, it's been quite something, now. Yeah, the month of July, uh, which is what we're just closing as we record or prepare and record this, um, has uh, has been quite a month in terms of the Brexit fallout. So let's begin before we get into the slides with a quick quote. Um, you know, I like to include these lacks in the uh, the presentations. This one, I've started going so far as quoting sporting uh, right. coaches and sportsmen. Now, I've run out of uh, people I, in finance I, I, and intelligence to gurus. say. Yes, yeah, so confidence is contagious, and so is a lack of confidence. And I think from what we've seen overnight at the time of recording this, with the uh, the Bank of Japan and the move in in dollar yen, amongst other things, it's uh, yeah, it's very much a uh, a play on confidence, one way or the other. Yeah, and, so we'll and, see how long it lasts in uh, in central bank because it seems as though it's coming to an end. And obviously, as we always say, a lot of trading takes place in your mind. Uh, the stories that you make yourself, the way you perceive yourself, your reaction to to events, the reaction of other people to events. Um, if you have confidence, that's obviously how you should trade. But you should never be uh, overconfident. And no confidence, uh, you really. Uh, should not uh, trade. Okay, so last month, a roundup of, uh, of what we said last time. So in, in italics, as it's uh, a quote, what we said um, just before we wrapped up the last meeting um, was that we needed to watch from the, the response from the central banks, including uh, particularly the Bank of England, as it was closer to, uh, to post or Brexit time, post-referendum time around Brexit. Um, so at that point, Mark Carney had come out saying that um, you know the economic outlook had deteriorated. He basically suggested to markets that he was definitely going to cut rates and uh, and uh, provide stimulus in either the July or August meetings. The market was expecting. I mean, he very much said July, July right? Yeah. He kind of used his ammo too soon, and then lo and behold, as we'll see uh, in the next few slides, um, we didn't end up getting the rate cut, which did surprise um, speculators in in sterling. Yeah, last yeah. month. So, why don't we uh, why don't we roll on to uh, the next slide? So it's all uh, data based. Um, so what we said uh, at the very end was to keep an eye data dependent, to use a phrase, keep an eye on the data. And you know what? Although many, much of this is uh, is lagging uh, economic data rather than leading economic data, with the exception of the PMIs. Um, you can see that it's somewhat mixed, but actually there's quite, in, in terms of the labour conditions... Um, you see a lot, lot of the data from GDP May and June, positive. right? So exactly. Unemployment was going the right way in, uh, in, in, in May. You know, they announced in July how the unemployment rate was over May, and it was actually really good. So that's, you know, despite this low unemployment, uh, still voted for Brexit. So the only real data that you see here is the, um, I guess what would be interesting is the, is the flash PMI, um, and that's... Uh, Really took a dive, huh? Yeah, way below fifty. Um, only, and we'll see that later, probably. Like only with Japan uh, is, is uh, in 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 uh, contract uh, contracting. Uh, so the the big one for me, which wasn't uh, wasn't on that scorecard, was uh, you know further fragility and negative momentum, serious negative momentum in the RICS housing survey data for the UK, um, which was in decline. Prior to Brexit, so it wasn't because people just, were worried, didn't want to make really a lot of decisions. Indeed, but it goes to show that uh, in terms of house prices on the right hand side, chart on the right hand side, that had peaked in 2014. So many pundits are saying, "Oh, it was uncertainty and all the rest." But the fact of the matter is that the housing cycle had already begun to turn down way before um, Brexit expectations, which, yeah. let's be honest, were for remain in the build up to Brexit rather than. True, true. Leave. I mean, so. it's quite interesting if you look at some of the uh, commercial property trust and some of you guys will have heard of, uh, you know, redemptions, a lot of redemptions after Brexit. If you look at some of these charts, for example, look at the Foreign and Colonial uh, Property Trust, which is a commercial property trust, that is actually, after having plunged for over 15%, is back to where it was before Brexit. Is that the Earl's Court one? Um, owns a lot of Earl's Court real estate in London. Possibly. I think it may be. I was reading about that the other day, or something similar, similar name, it sounds like that one, um, but essentially they have come out now and marked down their property forecast, or property book, 14%, and expect a further uh, 10%, so effectively a 
right down for sure. their property. But, but what, I, what I'm saying here but is... The others were 20 before that. So but what I'm saying here is that the, the Foreign and Colonial Trust, after Brexit, traded down 15%. But has that made it all back up again to yeah. being unchanged? So, so, like so, shorts, so, so if, if, if you're looking for an opportunity to say, okay, there's, there's a bit of a price, uh, there's a price that's rule. And if you then compare, compare to like UK uh, land or British land or Durban, which have significantly bounced from their lows, uh, maybe, maybe there is a bit of an arbitrage going on there. So if, if any of you guys are interested in, in looking at it a little bit further and send us some, uh, you know, your views as usual, uh, totally appreciate it. We, uh, we have a chart on Derwent in, uh, in a moment. So what we'll do before that, of course, many, many of the trades in equities um, were driven by uh, the move in the, uh, in the currency, so in sterling. So when sterling weakened, all of a sudden, um, UK assets, so the FTSE 100 names in particular, large blue chip multinationals, became far more attractive to overseas investors. Um, as a result of earnings translation effects of the currency. So in other words, if they're earning in many different currencies but reporting in sterling, which has just fallen overnight 10%, they become way more attractive, in addition to the other themes which were, were driving equities and, as and, well. and a trade on the back of this that we, we're not going to discuss here, but which is maybe my favorite trade at the moment, is um, FTSE 250 versus FTSE 100. FTSE 100, a lot of exporters massively benefiting from uh, sterling going down. Um, FTSE 250, very domestic uh, companies, um, opposite, uh, not, not benefiting at all from, from a weaker sterling, and very um, very much geared towards the domestic UK economy, which with the PMI that we just saw is, 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 is uh, you know, in, in a sphere of pressure. And if you then look at the charts and you see the FTSE 250 um, back to the pre-Brexit level and the FTSE 100, 3, 4, 5% above, then that gap, um, to me, is, 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 is too small, and you will be buying FTSE 100, selling FTSE 250. So that's a chart to uh, have a look at um, as well. Okay, so... So we, yeah. we marked the analyst forecast on there, just to go back a second, um, as you'll have seen, so just to make reference to what was at the top. We'll go through each of the, uh, the levels as we did, just for a few of the, the key charts, including sterling, um, which is what we focused on last time. I think it's clear to see that in, in, in terms of sterling, it's traded pretty much around the... Um, you can see on the right-hand side the updated chart. It's traded pretty much in line with uh, with analyst forecasts. So, so my negative bias has not gone anywhere. So with that said, um, you can see some of the commentary which I've been putting up on TradingView. A uh, very good website you should check out if you haven't uh, already used it. I'm now using it for all of the charting uh, in the academy here with the exception of some of the Bloomberg ones. Um, so if you, uh, if you take a look here, you can see the retracement levels. This is Fibonacci retracement levels from the, uh, the pre-Brexit high on the eve of the referendum, just below 150, all the way down to the 127.91, specifically, um, the 128 low, which is set intraday post-Brexit. Um, and what you can see is that we failed to get a consecutive close, or weekly close, above 133.16, which is the pivot. So, so the bias has remained very much negative. So what, what do you see here on the right, those, uh, bar, those bars? That, uh, uh, that just happens to be uh, volume which I have overlaid on most of my charts, so just disregard that. But you can see the point in time, the green bar, that I made this call. It's when it traded up through uh, 133.16, um, but didn't manage to close above. It was at that point that I made this comment, which you can find online. Um, and as you've seen through here, it's remained flat. I mean, the, the, the interesting thing of the volume is, and obviously it goes back quite a while, uh, it goes back six months this chart, but you see most of the volume is take, took place between 144 and 143, and this sort of gives you levels of attraction as well based on volume of, you know, where was where was the real interest from people. And you can see here that the, um, I think that's probably 133 is where most of the volume has taken place. So there's level, you know, a lot of people, some people will think, okay, it's going up and it's going to break out and I want to buy it. And a lot of other people will think, uh, Okay, that's that's the top, and, and and that's a great level to sell. So this one thirty three level is, uh, you know, is is, is is going to be an important level. So if you take a look, um, then in terms of putting up some of the charts, you can see the the quote from Twitter at the bottom. This is intraday. I think it's four hour uh, interval that we're looking at here, or oh, sorry, hourly. Um, and what you can see is, uh, yeah, the the point at which we traded right up to that level. You see some negative divergence. Um, then if you take a look at what happened next, so sorry, it's four hour first, this is a one hour version, also very much overbought there, um, and approaching key resistance. And this is July uh, 13, yeah? It is, yeah. 
So just uh, put the note out. So then one of the trades that I had on was to sell sterling off that level. It had come down a little bit. So this was, uh, if we look across, just below 132.70. Um, and then with a stop above the uh, level once it traded down the key um, daily resistance at 133.16 and then as you can see it did continue to go further down but uh, closing it out at the end of the day a quite a good payoff there so that when you take into account other longer term levels or potential areas of attraction resistance whatever it may be and you have a negative bias on something you can look to um, to execute, execute your trades in that direction accordingly and it helps you with setting uh, levels as well. Of course you don't just trade on technicals but um, I had a negative view of sterling fundamentally anyway uh, post Brexit. So um, And yeah, obviously everything well. here is, is, you know, we don't tell you what you should be doing. We're looking, uh, we're trying to see, this is this remains educational information. Yeah. Um, James shows some of the stuff that, 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 that he might do or, or actually does but it's, uh, you know, obviously it's, everything is at your own risk. And it's, it's much better to generate your own ideas than, than follow others. Sure. So here we're looking at the uh, FTSE. The FTSE in the past month, the analyst forecasts um, at the time of publication last month were for end of year targets, but a range uh, around 6,000 basically. Um, and yeah. And they seem to be off the mark, right? Way off People are very mark. negative on, uh, on, the, on the equity markets after Brexit. And you know what? One 10% offside. A then. month later, they, uh, yeah. yeah, they're more than 10% offside. I mean, we're looking at like it, it's it's a little bit extended, obviously here. Um, having said that, you know, just uh, it's just making new highs, and you know, you never want to fa fade a new high, as you see in the S and P at the moment. It just keeps uh, motoring on. So here's the Eurostox 50. Similar thing, up but not as much. It had declined initially. If we're looking on the right-hand tiny panel, the sliver for July, you can see it did trade down um, at the beginning of this month, post Brexit. Um, and yeah, it, it has since recovered, but, but it, uh, it didn't make, it did, it did make a new low. A lot of people came in and bought it, and and there we are back to the uh, you know top of the range, and maybe coming out of a longer term downtrend. Perhaps we'll look at uh, European equities a little bit later. So the UK has outperformed Europe in the fallout over the last month. Euro dollar, but it's still a range trade. There's nothing really going on here. Did trade down during the month uh, to the uh, it's the Goldman forecast of one ten. So at the time of publication, that's exactly where uh, the euro is. So it is towards the low end of the two analysts' uh, forecasts for year end. And it's also towards the lower end of the range. So uh, I'd be surprised if it if it goes dramatically lower here, particularly and, and given the selling of the dollar that was. And seen. then an the interesting pair, euro uh, sterling. Because if you expect that uh, you know the UK is, is slowing down, um, maybe more than maybe more than Europe, and that the underlying fundamentals are not as great in uh, in, in 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 the UK as they are in, in, in Europe. Then Euro sterling is just uh, broken 120. Um, was making a 104 low pretty much five six years ago, uh, maybe or 2008. So it's already eight years ago. So that that could make its next move uh, down. So that that'd be another interesting trade uh, to look at. And if you look at the ten year rates between uh, euro and sterling, so Europe has ten year negative rate of fifteen bips probably. UK a ten year rate around seventy bips uh, positive. So there's still uh, quite a bit uh, in there, and obviously currently uh, lowering rates uh, sometime during uh, August uh, most likely. So euro sterling will be my uh, second uh, favorite trade to have a look at. And here yeah, we are, yeah. James. You're always ahead of uh, you're always ahead of the the pack. So you look at it the other way. I look in. Uh, you're staring at. Uh, I always say 120, 120, 125. You look at it at uh, 0.8, which is 1.25 equivalent. You look at it the other way around. So here, same thing. Uh, going going close to parity, broken out. Um, what what else do you see here? Uh, it's it's flat on the month. Um, I had traded up initially. Um, but it's come off since, so it's just mainly euro. This is more like uh, yeah, it's, it's euro but, dollar rather than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see, gold thirteen hundred. It's been a very interesting month for gold, but we get into this in far more detail as you'll uh, no doubt expect uh, later in the uh, the presentation. However, uh, Goldman were the ones who uh, had a thirteen hundred year end forecast on there. We did trade higher at the time of publication um, post Brexit. We were just below thirteen fifty, I believe thirteen forty five. Um, and then in the month, of course, we continue to rally to uh, 1375. I believe we touched that again after the job support, and we've sold off since below 1355. It looked like a short. Um, we've seen it retrace towards 1312, and it's now up 
and off those lows, uh, breaking above, I believe, 1340, 1345. So we'll look at this in more detail later. But, um, you know, gold's not too far off uh, Goldman's year-end forecast of around 1300. So elsewhere in the world, now we can move on to um, what's actually happening right now.